What is going on, Governor? It's just cool here, and today, the gates of the Lost Kingdom are about to close, which means the gates of migration, the gates to Kingdom 75, are about to open. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. This is going to be a shameless plug for Kingdom 75 and migration to this kingdom, along with some logistics that you need to know if you're considering coming here. So if that's something you're interested in, then definitely hang out for this video. It's for you. If you just want general information about should I go to this kingdom or not, card up in the top for the last time we recruited to 75 and we present eight questions, really nine, that you should ask before you migrate to a kingdom. So let's jump right into the logistics for whether or not you should join Kingdom 75. My recommendation to you would be to immediately get into the Discord link in the description for Kingdom 75 recruiting. It's the Smash Squad Discord. Um, come on in. Water's fine. We can answer your questions there and coordinate around, all right, this power range comes in and this power range goes here and all that sort of good stuff. Now, in terms of alliances and different places that are uh, recruiting to the kingdom, there are going to be many alliances that will have space in Kingdom 75. We're going to be making some amount of space in the Smash Squad Alliance, that's the alliance I play in, uh, to have players that, like, look, if you're going to come, fair warning, you want to have a high death count because you actually like to wage war, um, and... Uh, I would expect that, like, you're probably over 25 million power. Like, I, and I'm, we're pretty flexible on on the power number in general. Like, 25 million is a pretty, in the grand scheme of things for, like, you know, an alliance that's trying to push the endgame. It's a pretty low power number, but it's much more about activity than power. So you got to be super active if you're in that 25 million power range, let me tell you. Um, the thing that I'll say, if you would like to join the Smash Squad, specifically um, our alliance, is that... We have really high expectations for participation. If you're in our alliance, that means you're going to have to be more involved than the average player in the kingdom in order to get end of KVK rewards. Uh, and we did give something like 95 of the 195 slots to the Smash Squad and the rest elsewhere. So um, important to mention that like a lot of people don't get those rewards because you really got to contribute big. Okay, so... Um, there are plenty of other alliances in the kingdom that are recruiting, though, that you should be really excited about. Um, and we have multiple shells. That's right, multiple shells that have um, entire alliances coming to fill them, which is very exciting. Um, now, there's going to be space. The reality is I say entire alliances. It's probably going to be like 75 people, and you know, there's a few people in the shell already. They'll stay, and some more people will migrate in, right? But we already have... Um, four groups that are coming, and we're probably going to split them across three shells, which is really exciting. The details of that we can talk about in a different video. Um, if you want to figure out where you'll go specifically, uh, again, get into the Discord, link in the description, uh, for the Smash Squad. Not my Discord, although you should go there too, but get in the D Discord for the Smash Squad, and you can sort of talk through where might I go. And that will have in part to do with like, hey, look, I'm going to have... The people that are coming in, the leaders of those alliances, they can do their own recruiting, and you can chat directly with them and see if you like them. See if it's a fit for you. I mean, of course, there's a bunch of alliances in the kingdom. You can always jump from one to another and see how that feels. Um, there is going to probably be a point at which we flip Imperium. And I don't know when that's going to be because, frankly, the kingdom lost a lot of power in this KVK. Um, we fought hard, uh, and we were small, right? right, Like small, but intense in our fighting. So um, my expectation is we have a lot of space. Uh, I expect that space will fill up and at some point we will flip Imperium. Um, for that reason, we're going to kind of constrain the high power players migrating with the exception of the alliances we're already talking to until we get a sense of like, hey, they're all in and situated and situated what that picture looks like. Um, the exception, however, to that is definitely going to be <laughs> it is definitely going to be the people who join specifically to play on the Smash Squad art team. We're going to have between three and five spaces on the Smash Squad art team, and we're going to swap people out uh, in the mid-season uh, at the point where, you know, assuming we make it far enough that we're like our division champion or whatever it is, like you can, you can sub people in. We're going to sub in 
I think like five people. So if that's something that you are interested in, I am very interested in talking. The person you should chat with is Long May He Reign. Let me jump back to our Lost Kingdom and our Alliance view. I'll show you. Um, you're going to want to have a conversation with him. Again, I would recommend doing that in Discord. It's so much easier to have that conversation. But Long May is right next to Vicera, right past where I'm pointing, but beyond where my green screen will, will allow. Whoop, gone. Anyways, um, Long May He Reign is the person to talk to. If you are higher power in that case we're talking like 50 million plus is sort of higher power although for the smash squad uh our team we're really looking like 70 plus million power and like 70 is pretty uh you know for considering that we intend to kind of push the you know, end state of things with with Ark of osiris league um, it's a pretty moderate amount of power but like not insane although you know it depends on your level of spend and how long you've been playing and all that good stuff right um we do expect a lot from the members of our arc team so just be warned like we expect you're pretty much always there and if you're not playing you're doing other things that help the team and we can talk about that later um now i should very briefly run through the eight questions i presented in a previous video the one i referenced at the start of this that you should ask before going to any kingdom so let me just breeze through some of those questions because uh, for the most part the answers have stayed the same um, first and foremost is the kingdom unified yes we have things that we don't always 100 percent agree on but we talk about it and we ultimately arrive at a place of alignment where we all row in the same direction and agree um, the kingdom buffs do happen on a regular schedule. Uh, our officer Haley, right over here, put together uh, a kingdom schedule for the kingdom buffs. So, like, you know what buff is coming on any day, and that schedule is projected out and changes potentially if there's some unexpected event that, that, that like, pops up. So you know, like, oh, this is when I do building. This is when I do my science. This is when I'm going to train troops because those buffs are made available, and all the rest of the time, by the way, we're doing resources. So you get the favorable weather, 20% resource buff, every day that we're not doing one of the other ones. Um, and we do, by the way, do multiple rounds, typically, of troop training buffs on Mighty Governor. That allows us to get multiple time zones covered, uh, and eight hours of troop training instead of four, which seems pretty gosh darn good. Uh, the next thing I do want to talk about is the Mighty Governor rules. We have a cap on our Mighty Governor events. Um, typically, it's about 20 million. Uh, we reserve the right to change what that cap is. Uh, so what that means is the kill event of the Mighty Governor is constrained. That's really insane for a kingdom to be wasting its resources on Mighty Governor killing when, like, the reality of KVK is you need insane amounts of resources. So the Mighty Governor rules indicate that, like, look, if you're going to be doing uh, fighting in the kill event, it's constrained to 20 million or less potentially uh we can change that around. The other thing that's really important for Mighty Governor rules is like you can't, there's no, there's no like trading farm hits and that's like weird stuff with hitting your farms. Like, no. Like you legit duel, you legit fight, no cheese. No cheese. Cheese not tolerated. Okay. Um, next up that is important to talk about is commanders. Uh, this next Mighty Governor cycle is still going to be uh, Leo. However, it is the last cycle with Leo, potentially. It'll be the fourth cycle, I should say. Maybe there'll be a fifth. Um, this is going to be the fourth cycle of Leo and the fourth cycle of Guan Yu. So if those are commanders that you want, you're going to want to get here by the time the, you know, Mighty Governor is coming around. And you, you would honestly have to push pretty hard to get an unlock in Mighty Governor. This is a pretty fierce kingdom when it comes to competing for Mighty Governor, and there are a lot of people interested in this particular commander, and they're really enjoying him. So um, you can come and try to get some of these sculptures, but it will be hard to complete them, unless there are multiple rounds of Mighty Governor with this commander. And as you saw in the 2020 Rumors video card up in the top, uh, there may be more rounds of these commanders we don't yet know. Okay, so the next thing in the list is the shrines and holy sites for the kingdom. Quite frankly, we need to revisit that mapping. Um, it's going to change around based on the fact that we've got a bunch of new alliances coming in and they all need to have access to the shrines and we need to reevaluate like which of the alliances really are doing the heavy lifting, heavy fighting and project like which might do the heavy lifting, heavy fighting in the future um, and just honestly evaluate where do they need to be, right? So that we have to do, but 
I know we can distribute better to make sure the baseline shrines and things are all distributed. Not shrines. I, I should say um, altars and sanctums and all that kind of stuff. The shrines are, are pretty well managed there. Okay, so those are taken really seriously. We're going to do some serious territory rearrangement in 75 once we all get home from this LK, which like I think stuff has stopped spawning in, which is pretty wild. Um, okay, so the next thing in the list... Uh, is there a Kingdom Discord? Yes. Most announcements go in the Kingdom Discord. We try to also put them in Alliance and Kingdom mails. That doesn't always happen. If you want to stay on the bleeding edge of what the heck is happening, you'll be in Discord, wherein you'll get lots of messages. And we are constantly striving to be better at communication, specifically. Uh, so we are working really hard to be very communicative about like what Alliance buffs are happening, and when have they happened, and when are they planned, and all that good stuff. Um, next thing to cover is time zones. This is mostly a... Uh, USA based kingdom. I would love to get more diversity into the mix here. So if you're from somewhere other than like US time zones, definitely let us know because that's actually a pretty strong selling point. Uh, and I think I've already kind of covered Ark of Osiris. When we were in KVK, we got really out of the practice of alerting everyone when all the different alliances had their arcs coming up so you could join and jump around between them. We will get back to that practice of making sure that everyone knows when all the arcs of Osiris are planned to be so that if there are spaces, you can go participate in that and get some sculptures, which seems really good to me. Now, as a kingdom, we do have a primary arc league team and a secondary arc league team. Um, it is also entirely possible that like, while I want to recruit some serious hitters into our arc league team, um, that we, you know, if we don't pull those players in, we will pull from our second arc team to bring into the main arc team. Assuming the second arc team doesn't make it to the finals, I, I hope that they will progress past that point where you can change around your roster. So I know we've covered a lot of logistics. Again, the catch-all for all your questions or further things that you want to know, um, you should just get into the Smash Squad Discord and you can ask your questions there. We're going to get all the right officers tagged and make sure that uh, the officers of uh, that are coming into the kingdom for the new alliances, that they also start to get uh, tagged in the right ways in that Discord so that they can start to do their recruiting. Um, bear with us. It's going to be really wild and crazy once... Uh, you know, the kingdom opens up for migration. We are not going to be just, you know, blankly or uh, I can't think of the word right now, but just like, you know, blindly opening the cap and saying, anybody come on in. Like we're going to be pretty precise in how we go about doing that. So um, be on the lookout in Discord for when and where and how and all that sort of good stuff and quite frankly it's a pretty good barometer like if you don't want to be in discord like this is not the right kingdom we communicate in discord that's how everybody knows what's going on all right enough rambling like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and until next time you have fun smashing the kingdom join us 75 baby straight to imperium speaking of which we're definitely like i am talking to leaders of other imperium kingdoms to learn what rules they use so that we can behave and operate like like a fair imperium kingdom as much as we can do right like we got we have improving to do we do we do we definitely do um and we will do it all right